In this video, we are going to talk about our mini project, Market Basket Analysis. So before uh, talking about the mini project, we would like I would like to share uh, what is the outline. So first we'll understand what market basket analysis means. After that, we are going to understand about the association rules and the metrics which are associated with those association rules. Thereafter, we are going to understand about data set and the libraries which are used in our code. And lastly, we'll understand how the code works. So market basket analysis or MBA in short, it mines the data to find associations that can be interpreted as rules. So for example, let's say you are in a supermarket, you or any customer, if an if you or a customer purchases, uh, let's say milk and uh, egg, then there's very then there is a likelihood that you are going to purchase a bread as well. So we can say that the following association rule is milk comma egg implies bread. Now these rules are also called association rules and mining of such rules are called association rule mining. So in short you can say the market basket analysis and association rule mining are synonymous to each other. So market basket analysis is useful for a number of reasons. The first reason is that it makes minimum assumption about your data. Secondly, the metrics which are involved in market basket analysis are intuitive to the business folks. Now, what are these association rules? So let's formally understand it. So let's say you have a set of transactions. So this transaction ID represents the transaction uh, like it gives a unique identity to each transaction and for each transaction you have a set of items that you purchase so for example there is a customer who has purchased bread and milk or there is another customer which has pur purchased bread diaper and eggs there, so these are the transactions so for example sake I have uh, shown five uh, uh, transactions but in reality there are number of transactions it could be in thousands or in, even in millions now from these transactional data, we are going to get, obtain these association rules. Now, the, if, I, if I consider the association rule diaper implies milk. So this diaper is called the antecedent and milk is called the consequent. So what this says is, if a customer purchases a diaper, there is a, it is highly likely that the customer is also going to purchase milk or if a customer purchases milk and bread then there is a li high likelihood that the person is going to purchase egg and coke as well so as you can see in this image uh, so in this slide the image that you see is represents the association rule which is obtained from the titanic data set so if you see you have a set of association rules and for each of these association rules, you have support, confidence and lift. These three are basically the metrics of association rule and we'll understand about them shortly. But what I'm trying to say is that for the association rule, let's consider an example, female implies survived. So what this basically means is if the passenger was female, then that passenger would have survived. Similarly, you could uh, consider any other uh, association rule, let's say female comma is couple. So what this association rule basically means is if the passenger is female and if the passenger is married, this implies that the passenger is survived, has survived. Now for these two association rules, what one is the female is couple and second is female the corresponding lift score are mentioned which is 2.09 and 1.93 now i want you to keep in mind that for any association rule the higher the lift score the better the association rule is now let's not now let's understand the metrics 
let's say you are given an association rule x implies y so this x or y they basically represent the set of items now x could be a set of only one item or there could be multiple items in a set so this x and y in short represent the set of items now the way you calculate support is it is basically the percentage of total number of transactions in the data set which contains both of these item sets so this n of x intersection y it basically represents out of uh, uh, it basically represents the number of transactions which has both item sets x and y n basically represents the total number of transactions so this is the way you calculate support the next is confidence now it is a measure of the strength of an association rule so the way you calculate confidence is it's basically n of x intersection y upon n of x so as i already mentioned n of x intersection y is the total number of transactions which have both x and y now n of x is basically the total number of transactions which contains only x now you can think of it in terms of conditional probabilities so it is somewhat similar the last is lift the way you, what this lift basically does is it uses the confidence and support and based on these confidence and support you get a new metric which is called lift so for a given association rule x implies y lift is calculated as the confidence of the association rule divided by the support of your consequent so invoice number as it as it suggest when you purchase an item for any item you purchase you generate an invoice so that invoice is represented by an invoice number and multiple items could have the same invoice number because at the same uh, time you are purchasing multiple items so for the, for example you have white hanging heart tea light holder so for this particular item you have an invoice number of 536365 similarly you have white metal lantern for this particular item you are you have the same invoice number so for invoice number 536365 you have these items which you have purchased and each of these items have their own quantity so for example the white hanging heart tea light holder it has a quantity of 6 or the cream cupid heart coat hanger it has a quantity of 8 so this data set also has a a column named country which basically uh, represents the origin of this invoice so for example for invoice number 536365 uh this invoice number uh, was from one of the supermarkets in united kingdom so there are many countries uh, in this data set so you have U united kingdom you have belgium you have poland there are many countries which are uh, they are basically the european countries only so if we talk about libraries uh we have used pandas so it's a popular all these libraries are basically popular libraries pandas are used for data analysis and manipulation then you have ml extent again it's a popular library so it provides tools for data science related tasks and then you have numpy so this library is written in c++ and it's meant for scientific computing and fast array operations so let us understand the code so we have imported pandas we have imported numpy and from ml extent library we have imported transaction encoder a priori and association rules so the data set that we have is an excel sheet so the way we read the data set is basically by using pandas.read excel so read excel is a function which basically takes the path where the excel sheet is present and it loads it into the data frame df so as i already mentioned each data the data frame has set of columns namely invoice number stock code description quantity etc so when i say df dot head it basically gives the first five transactions so as i uh, so the uh, uh, the image which i showed you it's showing the same transactions i can show it i can show the tail part as well so here you will see the you have some invoice number and then you have a paper chain kit 50s christmas it's the prod item 
you have the quantity and you have unit price you have customer id and you have uh, australia as the country so you uh, you have all these uh, transaction uh, i mean sorry you have all these invoices so if i want to know for each country how many uh, invoices are present so if i want to know how many uh, how many records are present based on the countries so united kingdom has the most number of records here so you have 4,95,478 similarly for france you have 8,557 and then you have netherlands you have uh, 2,371 so you can uh, have a look at over it because the data set is large so in order to perform certain computations it is better if we uh, fo focus on the records which are from australia origin so what i did is i said df dot country double equals to australia so what this basically means is this will return me a boolean array so in each data frame you have one of the countries you could have either united kingdom or you have germany you have france you have spain so whichever country whichever record has australia as the country is represented as true and the remaining records are represented false so in short i will obtain or only those records which will have australia uh, as a country now once i obtain the data frame now there for a single invoice there could be multiple items so what i'll do is i'll use group by and uh, what i did was i said okay uh, df of invoice number comma description so what i did was the df has a, a set of columns so you have invoice number stock code etc so in those out of these columns i will i'm choosing only invoice number and description now my date my new this date uh, this basically re, uh, re returns a date uh, data frame which only has invoice number and description as a column now to to that i will apply group by on invoice number now if i do group by what basically happens is i will get something like this so i will have uh, let's say invoice number first invoice will have a set, these set of items so you have christmas lights then you have vintage union jack you have a set of three colored flying ducks these are the set of items for a particular invoice so if i check the next invoice these are the set of items which are present now once you obtain these transactions you are going to use the transaction encoder so transaction encoder basically uses one hot encoding so the way you obtain this one hot encoding is you say you you call the transaction encoder function and this function is present in the ml extend library and once you this basically rep, uh, returns a transaction encoder object now from this object you call the fit function and you pass the transactions as an input and once you basically what this will do is this will fit over the transactions data and once it fits over the transactions data you basically transform your transactions so in short what you will get is each transaction and the columns are basically the items so this zero basically represents that transaction zero for transaction zero the uh, uh, the column base uh, the column dolly girl beaker this if this is zero it basically means that this transaction does not include this data item similarly for transaction one you have a uh, 20 dolly pegs retro spot as as an item and uh, you are you represent that item as one so what this one basically says that is that for this transaction this particular item is present so this is basically a sparse data frame where majority of the values are zero and uh, the, there are some values which are one so the one basically represents the item is per present in that particular transaction now once we 
obtain this data frame we are going to use the a priori algorithm so you can study about a priori algorithm from various sources and uh, this a priori algorithm also is implemented in ml extend library but in short what it basically does is it takes the this uh, data as an input and uh, you basically get set of frequent items so for example i in the in the a priori algorithm uh, of uh, this a priori function i pass the data which is uh, represented as transformed data frame and the minimum support let's say the minimum support i use is 0.07 and then I will pass use column names as true. Once I execute this, I apply some map where for each particular, uh, so basically I'm getting uh, this frequent item set basically means that I, uh, I have a set of items. So there are a number of rows. If you see uh, this item set, so this basically uh, uh, is a frequent item set. So set of 60 time beaking cases, comma set of 12 and something. So you have a set of items. So for this particular item set, there are four items. For uh, this particular item set, you have uh, four items. Uh, for this uh, item set, rabbit night light, you have one item. And for to each of the item sets, you have a support value calculated using the formula which was uh, discussed previously. Now, once you obtain this frequent item sets, what you're going to do is you are going to you are going to pass it into the association rules function. So this association rules function is also present in ML extent. So what you do is you provide the frequent item sets as an input. You say that the metric you, uh, uh, you, uh, you have is lift and then the minimum threshold is one. Therefore, the, uh, this one is basically for the metric lift. So the lift has to be at least one or more than one. Now, once you uh, run this, uh, once you execute this uh, function, you will obtain uh, rules uh, the uh, the association rules and once you obtain the association rules you will sort those based on the lift values okay so once you obtain the association rules you will sort them based on the the lift values now for example you have an antecedent 36 pencil tubes red retrosport and you have a consequent red retrosport cake stand so the support you have is 0.07, the confidence is 1 and the lift is 13.8. So out of, as this is uh, sorted in descending order based on the lift, so as out of all the association rules, the first association rule is uh, could be considered the best association rule which basically represents the data. So these are the set of association rules that you have if you want to see in detail. So that's pretty much it. Thank you.